Welcome to the startup lesson. Today we will practice the engine start procedure for the P51D. Press the spacebar key to begin. The engine start sequence is not very complicated. We will move around the cockpit clockwise starting on the left side to configure the aircraft for engine start. Let's begin with the flaps control handle, positioned to the rear bottom left side of the cockpit. For a normal takeoff, flaps are not usually lowered. However, 15 to 20 degrees of flaps can be used when a minimum run takeoff is required. Set the flaps control handle all the way up to the up position. To do this, you can either click and drag the handle with the mouse or press left shift plus F command repeatedly until it is all the way up. Note, the flaps won't actually come up until the engine is running and there is sufficient pressure in the hydraulic system to raise them. Now set the carburetor induction system for normal operation by moving the cold air control handle all the way forward to the ram air position and the hot air control handle all the way forward to the normal position. Next, set the coolant and oil radiator air control switches to the auto position for automatic operation of the coolant and oil radiator flap doors. To do so, left click on the auto switch positions. Don't forget to close the switch covers after. Adjust the trim tabs to prepare for takeoff. Set rudder trim to 5 degrees right. Elevator trim depends on fuel load. With the fuselage tank empty, elevator trim can be left neutral. With the fuselage tank filled with 25 gallons or more, elevator trim should be set between 2 and 4 degrees nose down. Aileron trim remains neutral. On the throttle quadrant, ensure the propeller RPM lever marked P is set all the way forward to increase and the fuel mixture lever marked M is set to idle cutoff. Set the throttle handle about 1 inch forward from the fullback position to slightly open the throttle butterfly valve and allow air to float to the engine. If you don't have a throttle controller, the plus and minus keys on the keyboard numpad can be used to move the throttle handle. Moving to the engine control panel on the front dash, turn on the fuel booster pump by setting the fuel booster switch to the up position by clicking over the switch. Select the left and right magnetos to provide power to the engine ignition system by setting the ignition switch to both. On the fuel control panel, ensure that the left wing tank is selected for fuel consumption by checking that the fuel selector valve is set to the main tank LH position. Open the fuel shutoff valve by clicking on it to set it to the on position. Let's set the parking brake to make sure we remain stationary when the engine begins to pull. You may want to open the controls indicator by pressing right control plus enter to monitor the positions of your flight controls, including the brakes. Setting the parking brake takes a few steps. First, pull out and hold the parking brake handle by clicking and holding it. Next, while continuing to hold the parking brake handle, fully press the brake pedals by holding down the W key. Continuing to hold the parking brake handle, release the wheel brakes by releasing the W key. Now release the parking brake handle to set the parking brake. If done correctly, the parking brake handle should remain in the pulled out position. We'll now move on to the electrical control panel on the right side of the cockpit. Set the battery switch to the up position to provide electrical power. Also, set the generator switch to the up position to prepare the generator to take over once the engine is running over 1500 to 1700 RPM. Click and hold the primer switch on the engine control panel for about one second to feed some fuel to the engine. When started in cold temperatures, up to four seconds of prime may be necessary. We are now ready to attempt an engine start. To do so, first press and hold the starter switch to operate the starter and begin turning the engine. As the engine begins to catch, move the fuel mixture control lever on the throttle quadrant to the run position by right clicking on it once. If you aren't able to start the engine successfully, return the fuel mixture lever to idle cutoff by left clicking and repeat the process starting with priming the engine. Note: The engine starter can be easily overheated. The starter should not be used for more than 4 20 second attempts to start, with 15 second intervals followed by a 5 minute cooling off period. Good start. Now we need to make sure the engine is running smoothly without any indications of a problem. 
use the RPM gear to adjust the throttle to run the engine at about 1200 to 1300 RPM. Monitor the engine gauge to check the oil pressure to reach at least 50 psi and the oil temperature to reach at least 40 degrees Celsius. Check the suction gauge to make sure it is showing a normal suction rate of 3.75 to 4.25 inches. Press the space bar to proceed. Check the hydraulic pressure gauge to make sure it is meeting the normal pressure of the oil to 1100 psi. Check the oxygen pressure gauge to make sure it is meeting the normal pressure of 400 psi. Press the space bar to proceed. Continue to idle the engine at 1,000 to 1,200 RPM until lift to taxi or perform a pre-flight check. Remember to release the parking brake before taxi. To do so, fully depress and release the wheel brakes W. This concludes the engine start lesson. Well done.